Well, in part three of chapter three, the central nervous system and also the autonomic nervous system. So the central nervous system, you have the brain, the spinal cord, and your peripheral nervous system, you have the nerves. So we'll mainly focus on this for today. So your brain, that's your brain, that's the human's brain. And they're covered by meninges. Meninges are the uh, three layers glued together, pia, arachnoid, and dura, three layers glued together between your skull and your brain. And this human's brain, so you have two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And the human's brain have the update control, so your left hemisphere control your right side body, your right side right hemisphere control your left side body. And it's not just human, all the animals are the same, the dog, the cat are the same. So if you found a patient have a stroke on the left hemisphere, they paralyze right side body. So that's the update side. And left hemisphere and right hemisphere, so that's the, we call the sagittal section, you cut the brain anterior, posterior. And you found the two hemispheres that actually separated. They only communicate through this area. So you see from here to here, there's the white structure called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is white, and it's white because it's myelinating exon. So this is huge. This is super highway for the left brain and right brain to communicate. That's the corpus callosum. And because of the corpus callosum, you, uh, your left brain and right brain they communicate pretty well. For humans' brain, uh, we we have so high levels of brain function. So the human brain is lateralized, means the left brain and right brain have a little bit different function. So you may hear people say, oh, you are the, the left brain person, you are so good at math, and you are very good at logic, reasoning, you are an engineer, and, but you don't know much about the emotion. The emotion is the right brain part. So you will say, okay, you are the right brain person. Uh, every time you listen to songs, you cry, you are very emotional, you are very good at art, probably you suck at math, uh, because the, the math is the left brain function. So that's the, the different brain part. And and you your left brain and right brain have different function, but you never feel like there are two persons living in your head and try to take over your your body. And the reason is they communicate pretty well through the corpus callosum. And now we're going to look at the, the central nervous system. We're going to talk about different brains area and their function. And a lot of them, we know that brain function is due to, we have some patient that damage some brain area. And we found their behavior change. That's how we associate a brain area uh, with, with, with their function. And sometimes they do it uh, by accident. They, they try to cure the patient. Corpus callosum, how do we find their function? Is in the early 20th century, and this is the times we know, okay, we have the neuron, and the corpus callosum is, is white, so it's, it's exon, and they cut it, they won't damage the neuron, so they, they thought only the neuron has, has a function, not the, the network part. And they try to, some neurosurgeon try to help the patient with epilepsy. So epilepsy is too much current happens in the brain. And when, when they have too much current, the current can go through the corpus callosum. So say the epilepsy start from the left brain, it can go through the corpus callosum to the right brain and affect the whole brain. And the whole brain is going to fire like crazy. And they paralyze their body. And the, the doctor tried to help the patient. So they will open the skull, they cut the corpus callosum. And they thought they never damaged the neuron. And they tried to localize the, the epilepsy. And after they cut the corpus callosum, uh, yes, the epilepsy is localized. So it will start from the left brain. It won't be able to go to the right brain. So only the head brain have the epilepsy. But they have pretty serious effect. So after they cut the corpus callosum, the left brain and right brain, they don't communicate. So those patients will report, they feel like there's another person living in my head, try to take over the body. And sometimes they will do something very, very strange, like their left hand gonna grab something and try to throw to the nurse. And the right hand will try to stop it, will say, go, 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 I almost couldn't stop it. They call it the split brain syndrome. 
and because they cut the corpus callosum. So they don't do it anymore. Uh, they, they finally realize they have to leave the brain alone, don't damage the brain. So that's the corpus callosum. There's a story of corpus callosum. And humans, we have pretty, pretty well developed cerebral cortex. That's the outside layer. That's, that's this, this part. They look gray, right? The gray is where the cell body is located. So they have the gray matter. These are the gray matter. And also you find the human's brain have a lot of wrinkles. These wrinkles, they're good wrinkles. Um, because you want to have a big brain. And the bigger brain you have, the more neuron you can put in. And you say, okay, I'm going to look like Hello Kitty. But Hello Kitty's mom really had a problem uh, giving birth to her because the human's pelvic bone, the pelvic brain, pelvic brain, that's the between the, the pelvic bone area, uh, size is fixed. So the human's baby is actually, we have the biggest size we can have of the head and still be able to go through the, the birth canal, through the pelvic bone to come out. So we cannot make the head bigger. That's the biggest size we have. And we still want to increase the number of neurons. So during evolution, when other animals uh, decide to increase a few pounds in their muscle to increase their chance of survive, humans actually use a different strategy. We put more weight in the brain. So the human have the biggest brain-to-body ratio compared with all other species. But the human's body is not strong compared with our other animals. We use the brain. And how do they increase the size of the brain? They could not make it bigger because it's, the size is limited. So they create more wrinkles. These wrinkles called the uh, sulcus and gyrus. So move in is sulcus, move out is gyrus. So on the cortex, you have a lot of wrinkles, a lot of wrinkles. Human's brain look like this. And you can call somebody uh, not so smart. Uh, they, they won't be happy and you can tell them okay your cortex must be smooth and they don't know what you're talking about that means they don't have too many neurons in their cortex so the human's cortex have a lot of wrinkles in the cerebral cortex area and uh, the outside this cortex have uh, this sulcus and gyrus uh, the outside is gray so gray we call the gray matter that's where the cell body is located so they have a lot of neurons in the cortex area and the inside is white. The white is the myelinated axon, like this area. That's the corpus callosum. That's where the left brain and right brain connected. So when we cut it, they don't communicate anymore. And the cerebral cortex can be divided into different lobes. So we have different lobes. Each lobe have their function. And there are mainly four different lobes. Occipital lobe, that's where your visual function is. So if you hit your friends uh, the back head, say, hey, long time no see, they see stars because this neuron fire, that's the occipital lobe. And here it's called the parietal lobe. Uh, that's the sensory function, like your somato sensory, your body sensation. It happens around here, the post-central gyrus. That's the somato sensory cortex. This is your temporal lobe. Temporal lobe is associated with auditory function because your ear is around here. And this whole orange part is called the frontal lobe. Humans have a huge frontal lobe. Uh, a lot of functions, like motor function, your precentral gyrus, this line, that's your motor cortex. So that's where your signal start. If this neuron die, you won't be able to move. It happened to some stroke patient. And this one is called the prefrontal cortex, part of the frontal lobe. That's your high level reasoning function. So you have four different lobes. And uh, occipital lobe, that's for your visual function, like the shape, the color, motion, they are processed here. They will process in different visual cortex. We will talk more about the uh, in the chapter 4, the visual system. They will even go to the other uh, lobes process, but the main one for visual is in your occipital lobe. In the parietal lobe, so each lobe, so far we just pick one function, one to two function to talk about. Now let's look at the parietal lobe. Parietal lobe, uh, the most important one is sensory, somato sensory, your body sensation. So I shake your hand, uh, your sensation eventually will go to this area, somato sensory. Let's look at this. This is called the post-central gyrus, that's the brain area. 
and let's look at this part. So this is the front view, and this is the post central gyrus. This is where your somatosensory cortex is located. And we found you have a whole body map. You have a whole body map. So if I shake your hand, or well, this neuron gonna fire. If I touch your shoulder, this neuron gonna fire. So you have a whole body map, represent your whole body. Very similar to the motor cortex. Your motor cortex is in your frontal lobe. This is your motor cortex. They're very close to your somatosensory sensory because they can, they can immediately pick up the sensory information and pass to the motor so your body can respond. Your sensory function is not stay there and make you feel happy. It's to increase your chance to survive. That's the function of the nervous system. So they communicate with the motor system a, a lot, the motor cortex. And the motor cortex also have the whole body map, but their function is to control. So they will control your 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 face, control your finger, uh, similar body map. And we found, okay, you have a lot of neurons receive input from your face. A lot of neurons receive input from your finger, but not too many neurons receive input from your body. Similar to your motor cortex, you have a lot of neurons control your facial muscle, a lot of neurons control your finger muscle, not too many control your body muscle. Why? Because your brain really prefer your face, your hand. We can have very complicated facial expression. It takes a lot of neurons to control those small muscles. Your finger, we can do a lot of complicated movement with your finger. We can play piano, you can tie your shoes, you can do you could not do that with your feet. And we, we take a lot of neuron control them. And you your your hand is very sensitive. We can train your hand to read. Uh, blind people, they can use your finger to read. And because we have a lot of neurons receive input, this is your sensitive body part. We kids, because the lips are very sensitive body part, we have a lot of neurons analyze information from there. Not so much from your body, your leg. So if we draw your body based on the number of neurons, it's going to look like this. It's called homunculus. So we found humans have huge hands, huge face, especially the lips and small body. And this affects our daily behavior. When you want to show your affection to your significant others, you, you hug them, you kiss them, because these are our sensitive body part. You don't you won't use your elbow to hit them, say, hey, I really love you, because that's the insensitive body part. So that's the homunculus. And not just human, also other animals. Uh, you found rabbit cat, or they spend 90% of their neuron analyze information from the face. And it makes the biological sense, because for them, okay, if you really need to uh, lose something, they can lose a, a limb. It won't be pleasant, but they can survive. If they lose their head, game over. So they put a lot of neuron analyze information from the face, from the head, compared with the body. It's similar to other animals, and also uh, human. Okay, so the cerebral cortex, humans have a very, very complicated cerebral cortex. We have different lobes, and they have a lot of wrinkles. And that's the wrinkles you want, right? The more wrinkles you have, the smarter you are. And now let's go to the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe, this area where your uh, ear is located, so its main function is auditory. And in human, we have language function. And I tell you, the human's brain is so developed and it turned out the left brain and right brain have different function. So the language is a unique one. Language only exists in the left brain, in the left hemisphere. You don't have the language function in the right hemisphere. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs>